Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So I am filming a little bit of a different video to how my videos normally go. A is all about pucks. This is Wednesday. She's two years old and I've had her since she was about six weeks old. Say hello to the camera. Yes, kisses. <laughs> all right I'll let her go all right so she has been in my life for like I said two years I got her when she was a puppy she's so cute and you all all know she's always constantly jingling around in the background doing something whatnot and I'll be inserting clips of her throughout the video but um, I just wanted to share with you a couple of facts about pugs and um, I do want to give a disclaimer that I do believe in adopt, don't shop. Yes, Wednesday is not adopted. I did get her from a breeder, but if I do end up getting another dog ever, I will definitely be adopting. Hello everybody, it's me from the future. So when I originally made this video, I just thought I would just be talking about my dog and the breed that she is and kind of explain a little bit about their care and whatnot while all of those things in this video are true about their care the one thing i do want to explain um that i really didn't get in too much detail in the original um video is about the statement that i made of adopt don't shop now yes my dog is from a breeder so yes i did buy her she was a gift to me from my parents after I graduated from college. However, um, I was a little bit worried about what people would think the fact about the fact that I got her from a breeder and did not adopt her. And my statement later in the video that says, um, if I were to get another dog, I would definitely be adopting, which is true. I have learned a lot of things and have grown since I have originally um, filmed this video, but I just wanted to explain a couple of things. Um, I did some re research on the puppy mill issue and the issues with um, shelters. Um, shelters are great, you know, they rescue t thousands and thousands of dogs, but the sad thing is a lot of shelters are not all non-kill shelters. So a non-kill shelter, they will have dogs or cats come in that don't have homes and they do not euthanize. So they try their best to adopt these animals out to good homes. Now, a unfortunately, a kill shelter, if they do not have the room to accommodate all of the animals that they do acquire, Unfortunately, a lot of those animals, if they cannot find them homes, are humanely euthanized, which is really sad because I don't believe any animal deserves that kind of fate. Everyone deserves deserves a loving home. And however, that not everyone gets that opportunity. And this is especially true, no, excuse me, in the puppy mill, issue is one of the contributing factors to this issue. Um, all of the information I'm about to disclose comes from the Puppy Mill Project. This is a nonprofit organization that is trying to end puppy mills. My battery is dying so I will come back here soon. Alrighty, we're just going to continue where I left off before my battery died. I'm just going to give you some statistics I got off of the Puppy Mill Project's uh, website. So I'm just going to read off my little paper here. 10,000 puppy mills in the U.S. licensed by the USDA and unlicensed exist in the United States. Over 2 million puppies are bred each year from puppy mills. 1.2 million dogs are euthanized in shelters each year. Missouri has the most puppy mills. Breeding parents live in cages 24-7 throughout their entire lives. 
living in dirty and unsanitary conditions. Many, if not all, of these puppy mill, licensed or unlicensed, do not receive proper vet care. Often, the owners of these facilities will provide veterinary care with no medical training and with no anesthesia. Mothers are bred every heat cycle and killed when she no longer produces puppies. Many don't practice human euthanasia. Shooting and drowning are examples of ways to euthanize dogs in these facilities. Many, um, excuse me, pups are taken from their mothers too young, often with health problems, and owners who buy these puppies fork over the cost. Pet stores and the internet are the two places that most of these puppy mills, puppy mill puppies are sold. Nearly all pups sold in pet stores come from puppy mills, licensed or unlicensed. Pups are shipped all over the country in small, cramped, dirty conditions, often without food or water for up to 12 hours. Many do not survive the journey. I wanted to add this into this video because I, it, it hurts to know that animals, are, for me, it hurts to know that animals are being treated horribly and not to mention um, the puppy mill industry and puppies are being treated horribly and it's not fair and unfortunately not everyone is nice not everyone's a good person. There are awful people who only care about profit and many of these mills are, that's all they care about is profit. And unfortunately keeping these animals in nice living conditions with good veterinary care cuts into that profit. So many of these dogs um, die very young and many of their puppies ha end up having health problems. Um, it's very unfortunate I just wanted to get some more, get some information about this stuff before I posted this video. Do not buy a puppy just to buy a puppy. They are a lot of work. They, um, yeah, they are a lot of work and they, um, all, every dog deserves a loving home. And as well as don't buy a pug just because I have a pug or if you see another pop I'm not a popular youtuber, but if you see popular youtubers have pugs Another popular one would be French Bulldogs and Dachshunds Don't just buy a dog just because you see it on the internet from a youtuber from an internet influencer always pick a dog that's right for you and You can look up plenty of rescues there's bulldog rescues, I found pug rescues, all of, you can get a certain breed of dog from rescues. You don't have to buy puppies. So that's just all I have to say about that. So back to our regular scheduled programming. Um, so with that being said, please adopt, don't shop. <laughs> Um, let's get started. So the pug breed originally showed up in China. Um, most people believe like before 400 BC and they were bred from like a local Mastiff type breed of dog over there. And they were bred specifically to be companion dogs, which they definitely are. Um, they were definitely treated like royalty by the Chinese emperors, um, very much a lap dog. And here's a fun fact, a group of pugs is called a grumble, which I would assume because they tend to, you know, snore and snoot and grumble. <laughs> um, so how pugs got their name actually is pretty funny. Um, marmosets were actually kept as pets in the early 18th century and were called pugs. And this name jumped to the breed, this type of dog, 
since they shared similar facial features. And pugs are well known for their light tan coats with like the black face and the black ears and all that stuff. And um, actually Queen Victoria loved pugs. She had several and she also banned the cropping of their ears uh, when she was ruling um, the England. Yes. Um, so just a couple of little other like facts about care and stuff like that. Um, pugs are very energetic dogs. They're bred to be companions. They're definitely not guard dogs. However, I beg to differ because this little pug, whenever she hears a noise, will start like howling, growling, barking, whatever. <laughs> she thinks she's a guard dog. Um, so pugs live between 12 and 15 years. They get up to about 14 to 18 pounds and they are very prone to getting overweight if they do not get enough exercise and if they're overfed. Wednesday is um, roughly between 18 and 20 pounds. Yay yeah, you! We're talking about you today. And um, they're definitely not hypoallergenic. They do shed um, and they do need to be Ba blah, 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 not bathed. They need to be brushed. This dog doesn't like to be brushed, and I've tried multiple times, so I kind of just let leave her alone. But I do bathe her at least once a month, even if she's not um, visibly soiled. Um, that just helps with her coat. Um, they are prone to getting dry skin. They are prone to getting yeasty like wrinkle folds and whatnot. Um, so bathe every month even if they're not visibly dirty. You need to clean their wrinkles daily. I try to, however, you know, life happens. And they also need to have their eyes kind of wiped um, they are prone to getting debris in their eyes because their eyes do bulge out a little bit. Um, there's like types of grooming wipes you can use for their wrinkles to clean them. Since they're prone to getting yeast infections and dirt caught up in there and, you know, fluid from their eyes and whatnot, boogers and whatnot. So they definitely need that area clean. And you can use the grooming wipes for the wrinkles for their eyes. Um... They do need their teeth brushed on a regular basis. I just use like the regular greenies, dental chews, or there's a dentist sticks. You know, any type of dental chew that I, I seen, I've found that works best, especially for a pug, namely that one, that doesn't like actually getting her teeth physically brushed with a toothbrush and toothpaste, which they make dog toothbrushes and dog toothpaste so I do recommend having that anyway and I do try to work with her with that but it's a little difficult she's a stubborn stubborn dog um yeah they're prone to tooth decay and whatnot so um always use a harness never a collar I've seen people use a collar and a harness using the harness just for walking and the collar is just there to have their dog tag and whatnot. And the reason why they do better with harnesses is because they, because of the smushed face. So they have, their noses are pushed in, so they are prone to having breathing problems. They tend to snore a lot, especially when they're sleeping. I don't mind that so much with the, the snoring bit. But if you were to use a collar and a leash when walking them, it can constrict their airway, which makes their breathing even more difficult than it already is. So, there's that. <laughs> and you also wanna be careful in the hotter months. It's currently summer where I live, so we just had a heat wave. It felt like 100 degrees almost every single day, so I really didn't take her out except to go to the bathroom, which I normally do take her on walks frequently. I take her to the dog park frequently. However, when it gets this hot, and she's not, they're not able to cool themselves down as adequately, 
dogs pant. That's how they keep themselves cool. Pugs aren't able to do that as efficiently as a dog with a longer muzzle would. So it's better for her so that she doesn't get overheated, you know, that kind of thing. And I usually take her to the dog park in the evening to hours, like five, six o'clock in the evening. It's also easier to walk her around that time or really early in the morning before it gets too hot. Now in the winter time, great. You can take them out in the winter time for their walks and whatnot, but I always have her wear a sweater or a coat and that keeps her warm and you need to be careful about their paws, um, especially in the cold and in the heat. I do th think they make like a wax or something that you can put on that will protect, and like any dog can have that. You can protect their paws that way. Um, what else? Food and water bowls. Now, pugs are prone to getting bloat, which is a twisting of their stomach, which is very bad. Um, this can happen if their bowls are too high and they have to like, you know, reach down. You know what I mean? It's better to have them close the bowls on the floor. And also if you have a pug that like tends to like not chew, but like, inhale their food you can use a slow feeder bowl and that will work pretty well for them too but i've never had a problem with her um eating too fast or anything like bloat you never want to exercise your dog right after they eat that can lead to bloat um and um they can be very stubborn dogs um, especially when it comes to training. Now, I've tried my best with Wednesday, however. The only thing she knows how to do is how to go into her crate when I tell her to. She knows how to sit. She knows to sit when the oven is open and the oven is on. I've taught her that. And other than that, she just would not learn anything else. <laughs> anyway... Before I leave you with a montage of my pug, <laughs> um, some pictures, video, whatnot, um, just know that, you know, be prepared for any lost dog situation, all that stuff, because that does happen. And no matter how careful you are, it can happen. I had a cat a couple years back who got out of the house he was gone for three weeks. Luckily, he came back. However, anything could have happened. So, any any questions about pugs or anything like that? Anything you want to discuss in the comment section, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, leave a like. Leave a subscribe. Like, subscribe to this channel. I'm trying, guys. <laughs> um, yeah, just stay weird. Be safe. Especially in the, the heat of things. Bye, guys. Hi, Wednesday. Guess who's getting a bath today? You are. Yeah, you are. Oh, you're so. Not sure how I'm gonna film some of this. I'm probably not gonna film all of this just because it'd be a little difficult to do that. And my bathroom's pretty small. Of course, she's gonna shake, so. Yay, we'll visit once we have her all cleaned up. Yeah, new bathtub. And that's the bath done. All clean. Oh, Mom, I'm ready to come out. You ready to come out? Okay, we'll get you out. Did <laughs> Wednesday. Wednesday, did you just get a bath? Are you all clean? Oh, hi. You go pretty, you look. All clean. Gotta trim your nails. <laughs> You're so cute. Oh my goodness.